Black Box Production. I gotta uh, say this. I've learned and I am continuing to learn to be very careful um, with the things I say from my platform on my mama mama like I had no idea that I could cause such irritation by speaking on some public information. However, in the wake of the Crown Court TV uh, putting out the transcripts from the homie neighborhood nip case and uh, me becoming aware of them, I did some commentary. And uh, I spoke on the... Uh, the driver that got on the stand, and then I had spoke on Cuz when he got on the stand, right? And it is what it is. I had no idea that my commentary was going to cause such a uh, a reaction on my mama mom. I just figured, you know, the transcripts is online. It's a public situation and that everybody was going to say they say and you know so, you know it is what it is i didn't write the script i didn't write the uh, game that we play i didn't write the rules <clears throat> it is what it is but uh you know a lot of times things can get bigger than just myself and cuz and it's a lot of people that you know are interested in my well-being and safety and uh cuz from a, se a section that i got respect for and I know I got homies uh, from this section. And it's just getting too messy. You know what I'm saying? I didn't realize that me, you know, my commentary was going to cause a reaction like that. So I'm going to be up off that, y'all. Like, y'all don't know. Um, my section, they section, we allies through the years, done bumped heads to gang of times. And we've always made to make made, made sure to maintain to make that make it not go all the way wild and I'm definitely ain't finna let no internet situation on my behalf cause others that ain't even you know what I'm saying I'm on here I'll be chopping it up about headlines that happened to be a headline but like I say it can become a a situation bigger than me and that ain't what I'm in it for so I'm not putting up on no uh Chris or Slauson for no squabble Oh, my mama, mama. But I ain't finna be taunting cuz. Not because I condone what took place. It's just that for those that know, no, it could get way bigger than just me sitting up here laughing at cuz and cuz doing videos trying to, you know what I'm saying, it could get bigger than that. So y'all ain't finna hear me speaking on that no more. Cause if you look, sit back and hear, especially what I've been saying for the last couple of years about this machine being in motion. And the fact that I even associate my name with Crippin' still to any extent, although I be upholding the one-man gang, uh, these ain't the principles, the standards, the ideals that I affiliate with. Everybody with the last name Crip is my cousin, regardless of what section you from. You know what I'm saying? My, a lot of people don't know, but... From, from my section, one of our most notorious enemies through the years have been the Broadway gangsters. Uh, my homies just had a meeting with the Broadway gangsters on some peacing type thing. Same way y'all heard us, we peaced with the, uh, had the meeting with the F-13s. And basically, it's like people coming home that did 10, 20, 20, 20, 20 plus years who behind that wall, typically, you don't, you don't got no first name. It's Crip. Although we do section off by our own, but the brotherhood and the bond is the C car overall. And when I affiliate myself with Crippin, it's about the positivity of it. Um, this is something my homeboy gave me not too long ago. He wrote this speech. He just did 22 years in the feds. Shout out to Kiko. And I know we got a bad rap. As Crips. And I know we earned a lot of it. A lot of what people dislike about us, all the bad headlines, we've earned it. But even in my generation, when I came along, we was really like derailed. We was all focused from what we was originated from. 
I just want to share this point, this uh, this speech with y'all. Let me tell you how many pages is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. They're not all full pages, but it's about six pages. If you could just bear with me. This to give you an idea of some of the fundamental, basic uh, concepts that make me still proud to call it, consider myself a crip in any capacity. Uh, this is called the Tookie Day speech. Also, when the homie, when they had the meeting with the Broadways not too long ago, the homie Kiko, he, he gave this speech as, uh, you know what I'm saying, as they opened the meeting. As we come together today as one in the name of the annual, com com the annual c commemoration of Stanley Tookie Williams, who was murdered by the state of California on December 13, 2005, we must never forget this great injustice that was per perpetrated by a racist and unjust system predicated on white supremacy. The, the concept to start an annual commemoration for Big Tookie originated in USP Victorville by the homies when the state of California unjustly snatched his life away. Since then, the annual commemoration has spread to nearly all USPs in the federal system. The annual commemoration not only represents Big Tookie for he who for he for who he was, who he and who he later became, it also most importantly recognizes his unyielding courage, faith, commitments in the face of death. However, the annual commemoration also represents a memorial in honor of Raymond Lee Washington the original founder of the Crips, as we as we all, Crips, Cripolettes alike, from every set in every state, in every city and district, in every county and borough, who lost their lives in the struggle. In fact, most of us today as Crips do not know how we really started and why, which has caused so much confusion, division, and set tripping, meaning Crips killing Crips. In the fall of September or October of 1969, Raymond Lee Washington, at the tender age of 16 years old, established the Crips with the aid assistance of his childhood and best friend, Craig Caddock, at his mother's house located on the east side of South Central Los Angeles. And during this time, while chilling on Raymond's porch or chilling in the living room or boxing in the backyard, Raymond and Craig formed the ideas, the culture, and dress code, which became a unique structure that established us as Crips today. Afterwards, the culture they formed was so influential that it resonated throughout the inner city and eventually escaping the confines of the inner city, spreading across the country and then the globe. And believe it or not, nearly half a century later, the subculture that they formed still continues to thrive and grow today. And what crazy is, not long after the Crips were established, Craig Caddock would be the first original East Side Crip murdered in the streets of Los Angeles on October, October 5th, 1972, 14 days after his 18th birthday, while Raymond Washington would be mysteriously murdered in the streets of L.A. as well on August 9th, 1969, 10 years after the Crips started. The birth and the evolution of the Crips can be directly contributed to the social ills plaguing the system throughout the inner cities in America, specifically racism, police brutality, oppression, criminal injustice, and lack of education and economic stability. Therefore, the Crips were a necessity in Raymond's eyes. It was about protecting the neighborhood, fighting against police brutality and racism, fighting, fighting against white racist gangs who couldn't stand the sight of a nigger or against any gang that posed a threat or caught or challenged them. And it was often said that Black Panther's teachings in the black community play a key role in a lot of Raymond's structuring and vision for the Crips. He will often eat at their free breakfast program in the mornings and listen to the knowledge and wisdom the Panthers shared with the brothers and sisters. So really this is what the system created, an environment, a condition if you will, whereas it's all about survival by any means, survival of the fittest, and with this type of dangerous element existence, ex existing, people would no doubt band together and form their own groups in order to survive. Thus, forcing Raymond to form his own group, the Crips, 
it was necessary. Several years later, Raymond and Tookie would meet at a local record um, hop in Los Angeles sometime in 1971, the year when Tookie first got involved with the Crips. After him and Raymond talked and kicked it for a while, Raymond realized that he liked Tookie's style and that they shared a passion for fitness. But what he really liked about him was he was charismatic and had a reputa reputation as a brawler. Took had hands like a muff, so Raymond made him his right-hand man and appointed him to run the west side while he ran the east side. Nevertheless, with Tookie's newfound status as the leader of the west side Crips, along with his eagerness to fulfill such a prestigious position, he would never think in a million years that he and the Crips would later pose such a threat to the system that they would be targeted by law enforcement and him, eventually marked for death by the state of California. Now that there were two leaders of the Crips, Raymond running the east side and Tookie running the west, the Crips would become an immediate force crushing their enemies. And even though they shared some similarities, Raymond and Tookie were very distinctive in their leadership roles. Raymond was a natural in leading trial and leading the Crips. He understood leadership at a gut level and perfected his skills by trial and error. He was democratic and demanded that you be tough and have heart no matter the adversity. And whenever things got too hectic and dangerous, he had no problems getting in front of it and handling it. And he was also the vision for the Crips. But when it came to Big Tookie, he too demanded a toughness from the homies. When he groomed, when he groomed the critique, he too, he demanded a toughness from the homies. When he groomed to critique the Crip, he was hard on them. He wanted to make sure that the Crip was a direct reflection of him, a raw ass and uncut Crip that was down for whatever. Tookie's leadership skills were simple. He led with his intimidating sides. He was on swole, all muscle. He was hard and intimidating force with a 50 inch chest and 20 some inch arms, coupled with Crip rage, a do or die attitude, hands like God. Enough said. Y'all still with me? I hope I ain't boring you. I hope this is as interesting to me as uh, I mean, to you as it was to me because in such a chaotic um, climate, it's kind of hard to find some type of uh, sense to the organization and just this little historical bit and um, just understanding the principles that kind of founded the original organization just kind of helped me understand better. Despite the distinctive styles and leadership, there were also other factors that would later come to play that they shared together at the end of the day. They both were a hell of leaders and, re and represented Crip to the fullest and religiously as well. Both were murdered unjustly and most importantly, they both ended up becoming legends in their own right and making history beyond anyone's imagination. After Raymond's death in the summer of 79 and took his incarceration in early 79, and then his eventual death sentence in uh, 81, the Crips as a whole began to lose their way by gradually abandoning the very same core principles that once made them who they were. And unifying and domino force, like the old, ad, old adage, whoever forsakes the old way for the new knows what he knows, knows what he is losing, but not what he will find. Wow, homies. Just think about that old saying, man. That's exactly what happened to us, cuz. As Crips, we forsake the old original way of Cripping, which, which was with honor, pride, loyalty, unity, respect, commitment, sacrifice, and most importantly, Crip love, cuz. These core principles are what made us that unifying and dominant force, but we eventually forsake them and abandon them, all in the name of what? That muff dope sack. That's what then came the bitches. That's what. Then came the bitches. The cars. The materialism. Which in turn bred a vicious recipe for envy, jealousy, deceit, treachery, greed, dishonor, disloyalty, betrayal, individualism, and murder amongst the homies. Where they would say, I'm doing me cuz. <laughs> them niggas over there. I'm up now. Or where you would have homies now killing one another or envy or jealousy all because one was balling harder than the other one and had more females than the homie he actually grew up with. Ain't that a bitch. So at the end of the day, we forsake what we knew once kept us strong, united for a dope sack, which has nearly destroyed us as a 
whole. Sally to say, hell yeah. And who's to blame? Every crip that put the sack before the hood. That's who. And what kind of homie is that? A selfish and ignorant, greedy fool. And when fools are in control, what usually happens in life? Shit goes bad, like a muff. And that's exactly what's going on right now with the Crips. It's all bad out there. And we got the nerves to blame the little homies. Ain't that a bit? It's crazy. They were raised in this big mess that us older homies made. That's why they got so much with them today. We left them in all this to survive on their own by any means necessary instead of doing right by them. Damn, but check this out, homies. Imagine if the laws of the universe that governs everything in existence suddenly went out of whack. The sun refused to come out. The, the, the moon refused to shine. The rain refused to give us another drop. All because they felt that things would be a lot more in harmony if they could do their thing in the fashion as they saw fit as opposed to what God laid the law for them to follow. Total chaos. There would be no more seasons, four seasons, the people would perish and kill one another out of desperation and the will to survive. Everything would be so bad that all things in life would fall out of place, perish. However, had the sun, rain, moon, so forth not rebelled against the laws of the universe that were originally instilled by God, harmony would have kept the balance intact and the people would have continued to live in peace because God created laws, principles, in which that Man may govern himself in order to keep peace and harmony amongst themselves. So my point is, that is exactly what's going on with us as a whole. We've abandoned and rebelled against the laws and principles that were laid down by Raymond and Tookie. Until we come to crip with this reality, he put grip. I just read it as crip on accident, and that's just crazy that it kind of like, you feel me? But I'm uh, um, until I lost my place, where was it? Until until we come to grip with this reality and allow those principles to once again govern us for a better tomorrow, there will never be no real form of unity, crip, love amongst us. None. It will be business as usual, homies killing homies. Furthermore, I would like to quote something that I ran across during my journey in becoming conscious that hits home more directly. Teachers are all the stewards of the proper cultivation of the people. Without teachers, we have an undeveloped people. With the undeveloped people, we set the stage for a backward society, which is currently taking place today. Now I would like to share a little knowledge with you regarding real leadership. Leaders become great not because of the power, but because of their ability to empower others. No man is a leader until his appointed his appointment is ratified in the minds, hearts of his men. If there is no journey, there is no leadership. Leadership isn't a right. It's a privilege. It must be continually earned. Anyone can steer the ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. And finally, real leaders get on that front line. It says, we are all in this together. We live or die together, regardless of rank. And remember, homies, even if we never grow to love one another, mutual respect is all that really is required to make the Crip Nation truly great again. Tookie, why he had to die? Because his growth development was deemed prophetic to Crips and our future. Before his untimely death, he had become a pedestal of redemption, a profound example of the ability that each Kiwi possessed to transform himself in a positive manner when forged in the fire. In the scheme of things, Stanley Tookie Williams represented a solution to the dissension, dishonor, distrust, not only to the Crips, but to a generation of youths that have been influenced by the Crips, therefore threatening the powers that be and their systematic plan to keep us dead, dumb, and blind. Simply put, Tookie had become the reincarnation of Gandhi, Malcolm X, Mandela, and all those who had the ability to raise a nation. And that's why our comrade is no longer with us. In closing, the most important thing that Tookie's life, legacy, and imperfections had taught us is that we all play a role from young to old. Wisdom is gained by knowledge and not by age. The more we know, the more we grow, the stronger we become. With unconditional Crip love, Big Kiko, 118th Street, East Coast, Block Crip, South Central L.A. Now, he also got here recommended reading. This is for all Crips. You call yourself a Crip, ex-Crip, future Crip, kind of like Crip. Read. The recommended reading is I Am Raymond, Raymond Washington by Zach uh, 
four tiers. He told me personally he would uh, recommend anybody who feels like they anything like a crip to as well read that. Salute to Kiko. Shout out K-Head. Shout out my nigga DJ from 190. Shout out all the homies on my mama mama. Career. <laughs> also, y'all might have heard me use the phrase machine in motion. I'm going to say that for another time. Because that paper kind of creakly and you know, it might not read right. Oh, God. When you're sticking to the script, it's a lonely road. Before they left the whole tank, the big homie told. He know the way this testimony hold. On that no foe, they gon' politic on him cold. SBI bank EC for really though. Used to really go, ask my nigga Chili Mo. Had a cold gun game, crazy knuckle up. Bust on enemies with baby double up. Back and forth with the main streets on 98. Q9 cell, me and Lil Johnny Ray. Posted up on coding with a big ratchet. Way before Lil Wan threw on that snitch jacket. Walked the yard with Slim Bag, what up, big track? Gave them back they L cause you did that. Love my lokes, even if we don't interact. Lil Mont, baby psych and Lil Black. EC. 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 SPI. EC. Exclusive. 97th Street, smack dead in the Middle East. Fuck the police for King Ron Ron and Lil Reese. Tell the truth, SP3 never lack rhymes. Sometimes feel I might die behind my rap lines. We ain't in Malibu now, we in Maui. Baby Pie, EC, Bear, me and Wowie. Tico, Kiko, EC Red. Still can't believe Frankie and CC dead. Come to putting in work, did more than a little dirt. Airbrush shirt. Big Milk, Lil Merc, Lil Box, Baby Ant, both souls, all the coops. First street to 24 when we call the troops. Lost the legend when we bury Bug. Coach Love to the riders that carry cuz, never seen it coming. Was a Lil Foul, still to the heart though. My hat off to Lil Owl, EC. EC. Spotter both got an EZL. Tiny Spotter got 19. Rest in peace, EZL. Shouts to the females representing EC. The brownies to the quotas. Rest in peace, TT. Big Tommy Sun on the 7 that's day pops. Me and mine never bowed down to J Box. And that's the coldest cripper nigga ever met. Coldest cripper ever heard about. Better yet, 33rd, never every. Only time a nigga ran. On the land, go ask my nigga Rand. ECG unit came up a little show. Got told on by that nigga Lil Show. Went on TV, the homies did BT Ugly. Got love for Infinite and Lil EC Buzzy. For death, though, that mean to my dying day. EC, that's all I've been trying to say. EC. Production. I'm VJ Keyway in the black box on my Baymac activity. Therefore, they call me Bay Machiavelli. But that's EC off the low EP available on all DPs, which would be digital platforms. Um, yeah, go tap into that. Um, it's a lot of bangers on the low EP. That's just one of them on my mind. Snack with Nip Hustle. Big shout out to my nigga SPI, Spotter Low. You know, I'm in the black box. Had to come through, tap in, show love one time. Yeah, y'all make sure y'all subscribe. Stay tuned. All that. Right.